Hello and welcome to Swift Goose. Today we're going to take a look at integers, floats, and doubles, and some basic operations that you can do with them. So let's get started with an Xcode playground. First thing we'll do is delete the variable we have already and start by saying var num. And we can declare a variable ahead of time before actually using it, using a colon here and then int. And here's where we're declaring the type of variable that we want to use. So we see that there's a couple different integer types. There's an int, an int 8, 16, 32, and these represent integers of various sizes that we can use. If you just select the basic int here, this defaults to either a 32-bit integer or a 64-bit integer, depending on your Mac's processor. So if your Mac is a 32-bit processor, then the int by default will be 32-bit integer. But if you have a 64-bit processor, then int by default will be a 64-bit integer. One way to determine if your Mac is 32-bit or 64-bit is by opening up the terminal application. We can do that by pressing Command Space and typing in Terminal. And you'll see here, Terminal.app. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see. And typing in uname, oops, uname-a. Let me hit Enter here. You'll see the word that you're looking for is this x86 underscore 64. If this says 32, then your Mac is on a 32-bit version. If it says 64, then you're on 64-bit. So let's close this for now. And back here, now that we've declared our integer, we can set it to a value by saying num equals 12. Before we use the num variable, Let's declare a few other variables that we can use later on in the future. var x, and if you want to declare multiple variables on the same line, you can press comma and then space and the next variable name that you want to use, followed by your colon. So we're declaring here that x and y are going to be of type integer, in this case a 64-bit integer by default, and we don't have to set them equal to anything right now, we can use them further down in the Xcode playground. Integers, floats, and doubles all have basic math operations that you can use for them. So let's go through those. Print num plus 21 or print num minus 9 or print num times 3 print num divided by 6 and finally let's look at the modulo operator print num modulo 2, which if you don't know what the modulo operator is, essentially it divides your variable here by this value and then returns the remainder. So in this case, if you have 12 divided by 2, the remainder should be 0. Now let's press play and see what the value is for all of these. Make this a little bit bigger. So we have 12 plus 21 is 33, 3, 36, 2, and of course 12 divided by 2 is 6, so there is no remainder, and that's why this modulo operator returns 0. To take a further look at the modulo operator, we can say num equals 5, and then print again num modulo 2, and this should return 1 because 5 divided by 2 is equal to 2 with a remainder of 1. And there's the one. Instead of using the modulo operator, you can also use the quotient and remainder method on an integer. Let's look at that. Let result equals num dot quotient and remainder dividing by, let's say, 3. So let's print out our quotient and remainder properties of the result variable. Print quotient, we'll use string interpolation to access result, and then if you press dot, you'll see we have the quotient and remainder. So let's put the quotient and remainder result dot remainder. You can increment or decrement any integer float or double variables by using the plus equals operator. And this also applies to minus equals, times equals, divide by equals. So we can say num plus equals 
one and then print our new num value. Now let's set the variables we previously declared x and y as integers and use them. x equals eight, y equals two. We can use the power function to raise x to the power of y by doing var xy equals pow. And this actually takes a double here, x and double y. Scroll down a little bit. And let's print the value here, xy. So you'll notice that this actually prints out 64.0. And again, that's because we had to set our value for x and y as doubles. That's called casting. And if we want to cast this whole result back into an integer, we can wrap this in a integer, open and close parentheses. And now when we press play again, the result will be 64. And we also have the square root function and we can use that by saying var root equals square root. And you see again, this is taking a double and returning a double. So square root, double, and we'll put in here x, y, and then print root, and we get 8.0. So if we want the 8.0 to just be eight, again, we would wrap this in an integer and then press play again, and it's eight. If you want to extract an integer or a float or a double out of a string, you can do this by saying var six equals the string six, and then we'll say var six from string equals, and we type int just like we did up here, and provide our string here six and then we can print out a comparison string here just to get an idea of what we have six six and six string six from string now six from string is actually an optional and we see that again with the warning here and that's because Xcode doesn't know if this conversion from the six string to the integer was successful or not. So if you had something like six RT here and you press play again, this should return nil because you, there is no six RT string that can convert to an actual integer. Again, we'll deal with optionals in a later video. Finally, let's work with float and double var float and we declare it by typing the float keyword and again we have the float float 32 and float 64 let's just stick with the default float value and we can say float equals 3.33 and we can also say var dub is of type double and let's set dub equal to 3.12345678910. And we have the same math operations available for floats and doubles, so we won't go through those again. But let's take a look at how to use floats and doubles inside of strings, because sometimes you might not want to print out all of these character values. You might want to trim off some of the decimal places that you have here. So to do that, first let's print out our regular dub variable. And you see we have a bunch of different decimal places. Now to trim those, we can print dub.rounded. We can use the rounded function and it takes no arguments, but you can pass arguments into it using dot. And you'll see you have down, up, toward zero, a couple different ones. But if you don't provide any arguments here, it'll round it down by default. So let's press play, 3.0. But what if you wanted to not round it all the way down, but keep one or two or three of the decimal places? You can use that by formatting your string. So we can say var dub string equals string and format 
couple different options again here, but just press the colon. And then we type in our string here, and then comma, dub. Now inside of these quotes, you want to put percent, period, and then the number of places that you want to print out. So let's print out two, and then F. Press play. So actually, let's print it first. Print dub string and press play. 3.12. And if we change this to 5, you'll see it prints out five decimal places. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and remember to hit the dinner bell to receive notifications.